One of Michael O'Leary of Ryanair today in front of a UK parliamentary committee was cribbing that he wasn't getting enough support from the British government for Ryanair, but he was also saying he expects a 70% volumes of traffic this year compared to 2019. How does he expect to be flying that many people this year? I think Michael wouldn't like uh, government support to go to anyone because if it's a free flight without anybody getting state aid, he hopes to win that. He's hoping to put all those aircraft back in the sky. He's hoping that uh, the, you know, the vaccination uh, would have reached some sort of critical mass. But what he needs for that to happen really is some sort of decision make at European level that connectivity is important and to roll back on what's been happening over the last few weeks where uh, people have become very nationalistic and we also need people to stop being uh, the one-upmanship that my vaccine is better than yours. And also uh, when nations vaccinate large proportions of their population they've got to be ready to open their borders we can't have a situation where i've vaccinated 80 percent of my population i'm not letting someone in from a country that hasn't there's a lot of things can go wrong but michael's absolutely ready and he's keeping his pilot certified and his aircraft certified to put 70 percent of those but aircraft hold on wasn't the case last year we heard an awful lot from the airline industry let us fly we're yeah. safe you know, it's safe to travel on airlines, but isn't it the reality that an awful lot of the variance and the movement was caused by people going, flying from country to country? Shouldn't flying be the last thing that we allow again? Variants have changed the game. There's absolutely no doubt about that. The aviation industry, remember, Matt, has a history of safety. The reason an aircraft crashing in Indonesia is front page news here is that they look after safety well. They worked, they knuckled down and they kept, the, they put in the procedures, consulted EASA, ECDC and masking on board aircraft. It's not a vector of international travel. The number of imported cases since this outbreak, since it arrived in Ireland, is 1,014 out of our 220,000 cases. That's the uh, figure that the Irish health authorities have, and it's replicated across Europe, about 1%. The variants, though, have changed the game because people are saying um, it should be possible to stop the next variant getting through. And the ways of doing that... Uh, have they're they're very crude the only the the people tend to look back to almost monty python pull the drawbridge up and keep everybody out that seems to be the natural inclination okay well, let's talk about select. vaccine passports because certainly yeah. at the start of february michael o'leary was saying he didn't want to insist on people having them before they could fly is the travel industry going to change its mind in relation to vaccine passports and do you think will the political uh, will force them to do so the travel industry will take anything. If they say, uh, you know, get a holy stone and run anti-clockwise around the airport, they'll take that. They'll take anything that gets people moving again. Vaccine passports, uh, about 11 different uh, uh, models were looked at. And the one they're running with is the one that some uh, viewers will be familiar with from Emirates and Etihad. It's been pioneered largely there. More enthusiasm in Southern Europe for that, which is very heavily dependent on Europe than in Northern Europe. It's going to be a big deal for Ursula van, van der Leyen to get that over the line but she is talking about getting it over in a month the IATA are ready to go but as I say anything to get people moving but I would always add that the aviation industry have their own staff to protect they have their own they don't want to get a reputation for bringing COVID or importing virus into any country they're very good at that over the last 70 years and they're going to keep working at that. Regina Doherty, Greece is pushing for this because it needs the tourism revenue badly. But we need tourism revenue in this country as well. And we have a lot of people who want to go on foreign holidays. So will the Irish government back the idea of a vaccine passport? So I think if the European Union does, um, we won't be an outlier. Um, but we certainly will follow the guidance. Uh, and once there's confidence in travel once we make it safer once we invest first of all i think we need to start investing from a state perspective in those international routes to make sure that we still have them uh, post covid and obviously all the employment that goes with it but we need to make travel safe we need to stop demonizing it the same way as we did with the building industry 10 years ago when we had a last recession because we know what the impacts of that were with regard to building and employment and if we keep demonizing travel as we have done so in the media and by politics over the last couple of months we'll have nobody traveling and we'll have no airline industry and we'll have hundreds of thousands of people unemployed in a hospitality sector that is so heavily reliant on the 11 billion euros that comes in for that sector every year from international people come to see Ireland so on our, our sites. What are the green zones that have been proposed? 
the idea is you link up with somebody else that you can have a relationship with. Like two household bubbles, is it? Coming it's together? basically bubbling country by country. The big inbound bubble for us would be Germany. Obviously, UK is closer. It's the biggest market. Might be more problematic. A big outbound one would be the Canary Islands, which have a very low rate. So, um, you know, we could have a situation where if the Ursula von der Leyen um, fails to open borders and Europe got very nationalistic, obviously at the very outbreak of this, they all said, let's fight this together and threw Italy under the bus. But in the absence of that, let's start looking at those uh, partnerships and we have lots of friends out there and lots of places where Irish people travel that they're very welcome and very safe. Okay, and fact, lots of people, Owen, we can offer safety in the other direction. If people do decide to take a punt on booking a flight in the hope that they'll be able to go on a holiday later in the year, are the airlines going to treat them fairly when it comes to switching flights or getting refunds? Very interesting to watch. They're pushing back the full refund, all the flexibility, month by month, but they haven't called the summer yet. The summer is where all the action is going to be. They're going to be losing money all the way through to June, maybe a bit later. And I will be. it will be interesting how uh, the, the airlines, what sort of flexibility they offer for peak season. I would imagine when push comes to shove at the end, they won't do last year what they, when effectively they done a bunk in, when it came to uh, refunding customers and looking after them at the crucial moment, but they will uh, offer more flexibility than we've ever seen the aviation. We'll also see a magnificent seat sale if those 70% of aircraft are going to be filled. Thank you very much. That is all we have time for.